leaving the union. And Karen Ginoni is in Rome for us. Karen. Lucy, thank you. Yes, we've seen 27 leaders returning to the place where it all began, the Palazzo dei Conservatori in Rome's historic city centre, a grand hall with the walls and ceiling adorned by frescoes. They've all signed what they're calling the Declaration of Rome, a declaration of intent for the future of the EU. But we're hearing it has had to be pretty unambitious in order for all 27 leaders to agree to what the future of the EU looks like. Uh, they're, having a whole, they're holding a news conference right now now, uh, let's just listen and take you inside that grand room in the Palazzo dei Conservatori. This is Donald Tusk. I'm from the Deutsche Presse Agentur. Um, as, uh, I wanted to ask uh, for the uh, Rome Declaration. Um, given the challenges by Brexit and uh, rising populism, I wonder if this is enough for more than the smallest denominator. Can this really instill new euphoria for Europe? Right, well, a question there being addressed to Donald Tusk, the president of the European Council, uh, talking about the challenges for Europe, because that will be on people's minds. This is not a pure celebration. It is a muted uh, celebration of this moment in time Maybe because of the challenges, not least Brexit. I think that what we've seen in the days running up to Rome and over the last few hours in Rome, what we've achieved is uh, a beginning, gives a, the beginnings of a feeling of, of change, because we didn't have a major clash or conflict between various different possible routes counter to what many thought and therefore I believe that the declaration of Rome is a good start to the broad ranging debate about the European Commission's white paper. The Commission doesn't lay down the line, it's rather a question of medita mediation between uh, the heads of state, the governments, the European Parliament, etc., uh, open to everyone who's involved in the debate. Well, there's the President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, taking questions in that press conference following the signing of the Declaration of Rome. It was the Treaty of Rome back in 1957 that they were signing in that very room. A man witnessing that event was David Willey, the BBC's Rome correspondent then and still now. David, I mean, how different are things? Well, very different from a security point of view. I was able to just walk straight into the Sala dei Orazzi in Curiazzi, this wonderful frescoed room you were talking about. Um, um, and uh, it was uh, uh, the security was very low. Today, the centre of Rome is in lockdown. You can't even get anywhere near the place, and uh, they're fearing demonstrations later on in the day. So, um, from a security point of view, it, it's uh, absolutely different. But of course, the main significant change is the fact that originally there were the six members of the European Economic community or the common market and today there are 27 and it's another story when you have to sit 27 people around a table to get agreement on anything uh, it was difficult enough even for the six when they were negotiating the treaty and uh, the funny thing uh, from my point of view is I found out later on although we didn't know it at the time that these uh, copies of the treaty these bulky documents on the table which you see in the archive photographs they were all blank pages they, they never arrived in Rome there was a there was a mix-up and some something went wrong but uh, the the ministers signed just uh, the top and bottom pages of the treaty. Now you mentioned 27, of course, there should be 28. There is effectively a, a metaphorical empty chair there, that of the British Prime Minister Theresa May, and the Brits weren't present back in 1957 either. They had been invited, but they declined, and it was already years ahead that the invitation would be renewed, of course, for two reasons. First of all, there was still a very strong Eurosceptic attitude among many British people, and then, of course, there was General de Gaulle uh, later on, who, uh, who, who uh, uh, put a ban on it. He said no, he didn't want the Brits in. So from the very start there's been a division of views on the extent to which you do have a, a supranational um, a supranational European community. Uh, of course the words of the treaty are pretty explicit, an ever closer union. Well 
Uh, we in Britain have said today, no, thanks, we don't want an ever closer union, politically speaking anyway. We're very interested in trade, but not so much in the politics. David Willey, thank you very much indeed for sharing your reflections of that day back in 1957 and the differences with today. Well, as David mentioned, the city is in lockdown. Not only are the authorities here tackling the security demands of protecting 27 leaders, they also have a massive demonstration uh, planned on the streets, which uh, many are saying could turn violent. So in all, a challenging, a tough day for the people of Rome. Thanks, Karen.